Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video lecture, we're going to be discussing about the energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line. Before we start uh, discussing it with, with the help of slides and explanation, I would like to give you a practical example of the use of energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line. Now, um, I'm working on a dam construction uh, nowadays, and that's our project. And in that project, one of the use that we are considering from this dam is uh, to deliver the water after passing it through filtration plant and treatment plant to uh, some residential areas. Now, that those residential areas are, some are seven kilometers away, some are three kilometers or more than three kilometers away. Now, for that, we need uh, to spend a lot of money buying the pipes and then uh, deploying them there on the site. Now, while considering the design of those pipes, it was really important to get to know about what are the energy levels of the water which is going to be flowing in, the, in those pipes. Like the water is going to start its journey from the dam site location and it's going to end up there where we are going to deliver it to the residential areas. Now, will the water complete its journey or not? Now, the, this question can be answered only if we uh, inspect or, and if we investigate its energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line. These two lines will tell us about the three things that are really important for the flow of water in the pipes. Number first thing that makes the water flow is pressure. Number two is kinetic energy. Number three is potential energy. These three things are going to help the water to flow. If there is pressure, if there is kinetic energy, and if there is potential energy. So these three things sum up and these will answer our question. So we will, first of all, sum these three things up. Pressure, kinetic energy, potential energy at the beginning, at the dam side. We will get to know about what is the total energy level there. And then in the end, or maybe in the middle somewhere, we can get to know about the energy levels wherever we want to. And we will compare them and we will get to know if the water can be delivered there because we will know that okay the maximum energy level is at the dam site and it starts to decline and will it be still there will there be still some energy till it reaches the main uh, destination where we want it to be or not so if it have the energy then that's fine but the thing is that it won't be having that energy if we are not designing it properly what do i mean by design is that if the pipe is so small or maybe if there's so much resistance in the pipe like if the pipe is small so there's more resistance right so if there's so much resistance that it is decreasing its energy when it passes from a, uh, a maybe a one kilometer so it will not reach the destination it will require a lot of uh, velocity or maybe kinetic energy potential your pressure but if the uh, if there is a lot of energy available or I can say if there is a lot of area of the pipe or if the diameter of the pipe is huge so it means that the water will be having less resistance and it can flow easily but how much huge will be the diameter that's the question so in order to answer that how much large or how much smaller should be the diameter the thickness the friction in the pipe and everything we need to look for the energy levels at the beginning at the end and considering that we can estimate that how much should be the diameter and how much should be uh, what should be the type of the pipe what should be the material of the pipe what should be the friction factor there and a lot of things then we can check them there and we can compromise some things or we can uh, focus on some things there and it will work for us so that's where these energy levels are being considered and this is actually this energy level in the line throughout the length of the pipe is actually energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line. So this is the practical example. Now let's see that how actually this thing works theoretically. So let's dig it. Thank you. So energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line. Now the first thing that we need to know about before we discuss this thing is Bernoulli's equation. Now as I said that the energies that are making the water flow in the pipes are three types of things. The number one is the pressure, as you can see it here. Number two is the kinetic energy. 
and number three is the potential energy so this is kinetic energy pressure kinetic energy and potential energy now according to bernoulli's theorem the pressure plus kinetic energy plus potential energy at point one will be equal to pressure plus kinetic energy plus potential energy at point two right but this is not uh, possible in the real world because there are a lot of losses that occur there so this is only possible this theorem is only possible in ideal conditions where there are no losses right this is where there is ideal condition and by ideal condition we means when there is no friction or there are no losses no nothing type of no any type of a loss that occurs there now you can for you can understand i hope you understand this is density rho like fluid density the velocity again density gravitational uh, acceleration height pressure etc etc so this is the one thing that we need to understand right now based on this we are going to be discussing these two energy rate and how do you find now before we move further we also need to know about head what is meant by head now head is not pressure it is different from pressure actually now for the head now for head if i explain it here so it's written that the fluid head is the pressure which is measured by the height to which the fluid uh, that is being pumped can be raised by the pressure so why is this head important is because if let's say this is the pipe and i can just install a tube here a vertical tube now if the water is flowing here like this let's say the water will rise to some level and this level is going to be measured in meters or in feet or i can just simply say the distance it is the distance that the water is covering vertically and this distance will tell us that how much is the pressure of this liquid which is flowing here so you can see that it's so easy that just by inspecting the distance the water have covered vertically we can get to know about how much is the pressure here similarly for the velocity velocity head is the same if you convert the uh, just like in the case of pressure you were converting pressure uh, into pressure head so in case of kinetic energy you convert the kinetic energy into velocity head in case of elevation you convert the elevation into elevation head so how would you measure the elevation head elevation head is simply if this is the center line of the pipe so the distance from the datum or the reference point to this center line is known as the elevation head so you can see there is no uh, measurement involved you just find the distance and that's what is the elevation head similarly for the velocity head it's the conversion of the kinetic energy which is 1 by 2 rho v square into uh, a similar a similar column and the rise of the water inside it and then you convert that into the velocity head as well here so for the pressure you convert that as well in in, in this case like this right so this is the velocity head this is the elevation head and the pressure head now let's discuss it more clearly in an example here but before that example let me actually introduce piezometer because we discussed about this column here so in this case in the case of pressure the column is known as the piezometer this is actually a device which measures the pressure for you so that column is actually known as a piezometer or it's actually a device not a column and the device is used to measure the liquid pressure in the system by measuring the height to which the column of the liquid rises against the gravity right or a device which measures the pressure more precisely piezometric head of groundwater at specific point so this is just for the pressure similarly you have for kinetic energy which converts and you gives you the velocity head and you have for the elevation but for elevation you can just use the uh, measurement uh, scale which will give you the distance from this point to this point similarly for velocity head right so let's move further let's just uh, let's consider a pipe and let's discuss these three things and let's try to construct a hydraulic gradient line and energy gradient line and i hope you will understand it so let's say this is a pipe here right and i will just like to uh, construct a column here like this right let's say this is a column here and then a column here as well like this let's say a piece of meter now this is point one and this is point two now when the water starts flowing in this so let's say this is the water that is starting to flow in this right like this so the water will rise to some level here right and before the water is actually 
arising there, let me just let's consider that the water is not yet started. I there's one more important thing that we should first discuss before actually making the water flow here. So I'm sorry. So let me make one here. The first thing is that datum uh, and the center line. So this is the center line here. And here we have a reference point. So let's say this is the reference point, right? And from this reference point to this location one here, the center line, this distance is Z1, which is the elevation one. And till this, this is the Z2, which is the elevation two. Now I have taken the pipe, which is totally straight. So that's why the Z1, Z2 is equal, but you can incline the pipe and the things will be different. But I wanted to make the things simple. So that's why I took it a st uh, straight horizontal pipe. Now this is the Z1. Now let's allow the water to flow in it. So let's say the water starts to flow in it, right? And when it reaches here, so it rises up and it will go till some height. Now we don't know how much height it would be going to, but it depends on your situation or your experiment or your project. So it let's say in my project, it goes till this one height. So this is the pressure head. This is the uh, pressure head till which it went, P1. Okay. Now the water continues its journey. And let's say it reaches our second point of consideration. And now it goes up again. But this time it stops here. Now first thing, why did the water stop here? Because there are some losses. Now according to Bernoulli theorem, it should have not been stopped here. It should have gone there. It should be equal. But because in real life there are losses, so that's why due to those losses, it's not totally equal. And that's why this line is going to be a little inclined like this. Not little, but a lot inclined like this. And this inclined line, which is the sum of the pressure plus elevation, pressure head plus the elevation head, is known as, and this one as well, pressure head and elevation is known as the hydraulic gradient line like this now for energy gradient line you should add the velocity head as well so let's say i add another tube here or another measuring device for velocity head and let's say the velocity here reaches to to this point and for this point to to to, to let's say this point right now if i join them so again, it goes like this. Now it's again inclined because the same, just like I told you earlier, there were some losses there. So due to those losses, it's not straight. Now, if you add those losses here, let's say if I add those losses, so the line will be straight like this, right? So I can say that this plus the, uh, this is EGL, okay, EGL. So this is EGL without losses, sorry, with losses or with friction. You can write it with losses or with friction and this is EGL without losses without loss right so this is EGL plus sorry this is head loss I can call this as head loss this is actually head loss because there is a loss in the head now one thing this is okay this is the velocity head velocity right velocity head and this is the velocity head for this region now you need to understand that this is actually pressure head this is elevation head this is velocity head right now why did i say this because if you see in the bernoulli's equation this is not actually head this is actually pressure this is kinetic energy this is potential energy now how will you convert this into head you know to convert this into head let me do that maybe here so According to Bernoulli's equation, it was P1 plus 1 by 2 rho V square plus uh, Z1. And so, sorry, it was rho G, and you can say Z or H, right? Let me confirm. Yeah. Now, in order to convert this into head, what will you do? You will divide it by, divide it by, unit weight which is rho g so if you divide it by unit weight it will become p1 by rho plus 1 by 2 rho v square by 
unit weight plus rho g z by unit weight so because this is equal to rho g so this will become p1 by rho plus 1 by 2 and this rho g will cancel this rho so v square by g plus this rho g cancels with this so this becomes z so this is actually the summation of it this is the total head this is the head which is the energy gradient uh, line eg l this is egl right egl pressure head velocity head and z and this z1 plus v by gamma and this is v square by g 1 by 2 right now if you see there's one interesting thing about this head is that these are all in the units of distance the distance the unit of head is distance unit is distance you can prove that for z it's already distance it's in meter for v square by g let's find it v square by 2g for v square by 2g v unit of v is meter per second whole square and for g it's meter per second square so you can cancel this meter with the square so only meter is left this second square with the second square so only meter so you can see its unit is meter similarly for pressure it's meter as well so the unit of this is meter which gives us this information that this is measured in this uh, tube which gives us the distance of this velocity head pressure head and z1 right so this in the end if we summarize this in this pipe at this location one it gives us this much is the energy total energy of the water flowing here and at this location this much is the total energy that it is having right velocity and put uh, pressure and the elevation this is energy so this is more this is less and it is flowing outside like this now this is till some value like HGL is having some value, the EGL is having some value, but this might become zero at some point. This might become zero at some point. So that point should also be uh, considered. If the pressure head, the velocity head and the elevation head becomes zero at some point here. So it means there will be no velocity, there will be no pressure, there will be no elevation head. So there will be no flow of the water there, right? velocity is zero the pressure is zero so no flow of water there so at that point then you'll be needing to provide some pump or some force to make that water flow but here currently in our pipe there is a lot of head available so it is flowing right so there's no issue so these are this is the discussion of the uh, energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line and also we have covered the head loss here which is going to be uh, important here and there are also one more important thing which was friction factor here the friction in this pipe can reduce uh, the pressure head velocity head and that's why the hydraulic gradient line is decreased when it moves from this point to that point right so this was a discussion about the energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line i hope you understood that we'll meet in the next lecture thank you very much now here is now here as you can see i'm having a pipe here and uh, in for this pipe we're going to do a little experiment related to the study that we did now you can see there is no flow of water from the pipe because the tap is closed from there and in this pipe we are having uh, some static water which is uh, of course whenever you close the tap so still there is some water left but that water is static and there is no velocity and there is no pressure which is making the water flow from this so let's do something because we're no, not having pressure head we're not having velocity head so there is no flow of water that is still lying in that pipe let's try to provide some datum head and let's see if the water flows from there so for datum head i'm going to increase uh, the head there the elevation head and you can see that i'm increasing the elevation head at the starting point and i'm expecting some water to flow from the uh, end there and you can see here that the water has started to flow there this is the static water which has started to flow due to the head that i have increased at one point and a very low head at the other point so because of that head difference the water have flowed there so this is one of the application of the energy gradient line and hydraulic gradient line and you can see the water that have flowed from the pipe due to the change of the head so i hope you understood that Thank you very much.
Take care. Thank you very much.